Hi guys, it's Pete from MyJewelryBunch.com. Today we're going to continue with our Why Jewelry Shouldn't Be Afraid video series and uh, we're going to use Blender to create another simple ring and I'm going to show you a couple more things I'd like you to practice over the next week. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share on social media. The more sharing you do, the better my videos and my channel does and I appreciate everything you guys can do. So let's get started. One, we made a basic ring and I showed you how to use the uh, Boolean tools. We also addressed scaling in Blender and why I recommend not really screwing around with the, uh, the measurements and scaling because when you're speaking in terms of uh, 3D printing any model, but especially jewelry, just remember that each of these squares, and I'll hit the seven key to come up, each of these squares represents approximately a millimeter. So just keep that in mind. Again, I'm just touching lightly on this. Um, I want to cover uh, a different way of making a ring. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to create a new ring by uh, actually working with a circle. And in the last video, we used a cylinder. We used the Boolean tool to cut through it. In this video, we're gonna actually use a, a circle and see how well this works for us. And then I'm going to show you some little tips and tricks to give the ring some interest. So again, to add a mesh, we're gonna hit and hold the shift key, then press the A, release both keys. Now we brought up our add menu. Here we're going to add in a circle. And you can see, I'm gonna zoom in here. It's just a, a circle, it gives us no, you know, no dimensions, there's no three dimensions. It's just a one ring circle, but not a curve, it is a mesh. If I hit the tab key to go into edit mode, you can see we have all these points here. And I can, unselect them by double tapping the A key or select them by pressing the A key. And what I want to do now is with everything selected, all of these are highlighted in kind of this orangish yellow, I want to press extrude and then S and I'm going to make this a little smaller. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm making, I'm giving the ring some faces and let's zoom in here. Each of these squares, these little gray squares, are faces. Each of these little dots are called vertexes. And we can denote that by these little three lines up in the upper left corner. We have vertexes, we have our lines, and then we have our faces. If I select all faces now, I can hit extrude again, the E key, hit E to extrude, and I'm going to extrude along the Z axis, so I'm gonna hit Z and let go. And now when I move my mouse, you can see I can extrude this up just like that, and let's <clears throat> just make this basic ring here. I'm gonna zoom out, and you can see we've got our basic ring shake. It, it doesn't look any special. It was a lot quicker than using the Boolean tools, so this is something that you should consider using. So don't worry about, you know, the boolean tools for now in this particular video but you're gonna have to know how to use the boolean tools if you didn't watch that video i'll put a link to it in the description below and you should go watch it because it's it's a good thing to practice again i want to rotate this along the uh, x-axis so i'm going to hit r x and then 90 because i want to rotate it 90 degrees and then press enter and you can see we've rotated it along the x-axis i'm going to right click on this and i'm going to come down with this new properties menu and I'm going to set origin and I'm going to set origin to origin to center of mass and that just puts our cursor right in the middle that 3d cursor puts it right in the middle of our object so here is our basic ring yeah, it doesn't look like much we can smooth shade this by right clicking on the object going to the smooth shade and you can see it gives it some textural pattern I can add in a, uh, a modifier and I'll go over modifiers shortly but uh, certain modifiers like the edge split will actually give it a smooth circumference, but yet keeps a sharp edge. And I kind of like to work with that. When modeling, however, I suggest that you just keep this in flat. Um, work with just these little square boxes because it's much easier. Blender will give you errors if you have things on smooth shading. So just keep that in mind. <clears throat> to give this ring a little interest, what I'd like to do is uh, go into edit mode. 
Now you can see we have nothing selected except for the faces. I'm going to double click and make sure nothing is selected at all. So the A key selects everything. If you tap the A key twice quickly, it unselects everything. And what I want to do now is I want to give a rounded corner to each perimeter on the outside of this ring. So the perimeter along my mouse cursor as I'm moving it around, I want to give this kind of a, a rounded corner. To do that, what I want to do is select our edge tool. I'm going to click one of the edges. I'm going to hold the shift and the alt key together and click on another edge along that same line. And you can see it highlights both of those. Now, I can press the next tool, which is a bevel tool, which is control B, will allow me to create a bevel. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? And then if I use my mouse wheel and scroll up, I can add in a rounded edge. And depending on how sharp I want the edge to be, I can move it in or out and, and get whatever detail I want. So I'm going to press the right mouse button and cancel that. And we're going to do that again. So use your mouse cursor. Make sure your edge tool is selected and that you're in edit mode. Select an edge loop here and then press and hold the shift key and the alt key. And while holding those two keys down, press the next edge next to it and it selects an entire circumference of edges. Now you can select multiple edges one at a time by clicking an edge, holding the shift key and then clicking another one and another one and another one. And you can do this all the way around. And we can actually control just these functional edges. Like if I wanted to add a bevel to this by hitting control B, I can just create a bevel along those. So you can see the design that I get. Let me just zoom in here. You can see I get a, a unique design along that. But we have this little indentation here. It kind of looks awkward. But you may design a ring that you want that in. So you can keep that in mind. Again, let's practice giving this an outside edge. So I'm going to select this edge loop. I'm going to hold the shift key down and the alt key down. I'm going to select the next one. I'm also going to go to the opposite side now and select one of the other edges. And now you can see both outer perimeter edges are selected. Again, I want to give these outer images, these outer edges, a bevel. So I will hold the control key and press the B key. And now I can move in and out and give those however many edge loops I want to kind of give it a slight pattern. I'm going to quickly go into um, object mode by pressing the tab key. And you can see now that um, our object, our ring, actually looks a little bit more presentable. And if I smooth shade this, it even looks better. So I'm going to go back into flat shading. And again, we're going to enter edit mode again by pressing the tab key. Remember, the tab key will cycle through edit and object mode. I'm going to select the inner edge this time and press the shift and alt key while holding those. I'll select the next edge over and then I'll go to the opposite edge and do the same. So I've multiple, multiple selected the inner edges. And again, I'm going to do control B to give it a little bezel. This time, I'm not going to give it as much a bezel, just a little bit, just to round off those curves. Because when we're talking about rings, we don't necessarily want sharp edges on our rings. Go back into object mode by pressing the tab key, and I'm going to smooth shade this so that we can see what it looks like. That's how we use the extrude tool, the E key, which is the extrude tool. <coughs> and the control B or bevel tool to give a simple shape to a ring. So again, I want you to practice that. Extrude and the control B when making a simple ring just like this. Now I'm going to start over with a new object and I'm going to discard these changes and we're going to start one more time again we're going to hold the shift key and A and we're going to add a circle. With that circle selected, I'm going to enter into edit mode by pressing the, t the tab key. None of my vertices are selected, so I'm going to press A to select them all. Then I'm going to press E to extrude those. 
and then S to size them. And then I can go either way, in or out. So if I go out this time, now I have some dimension to this, even though it's just two dimensions. And I can also extrude again, and I'll hit the Z key this time, and now I can extrude up. Okay, so see how that works? Now, it's a little harder to join the inside opened edge here with this edge if I extrude and then size and then make this a little smaller. The problem is I'm probably not going to get exactly what I want because I don't have a way of joining these. If I extrude and then Z and bring them down, we're probably not going to match and we're going to end up with a little bit of a gap in here where things don't work out well. And you can see that here are my edges don't, they don't match up with the other one. So let's just go and make this ring one more time and do it the right way. Let's go to File, New, General, Discard Changes. And we're going to start again. Shift A, we're going to open a circle. I'm going to hit Tab to enter Edit Mode with all my vertices selected. Hit the E key and then the S key to size. So we're extruding and then sizing, and I'm going to size in. I'm going to go back to my vertices, edges, and face tool. I'm going to select all the faces, pressing the A key, and then extrude, and then Z along the Z axis, which is up and down. And I'll just make a ring. Well, I'll just make it like that. And there we go. And that's how we make our basic ring. And then just keep practicing that until you get comfortable with that. Now I'm going to do one more thing in this. I'm going to show you one more option that you have with this. I'm going to go back into object mode. I'm going to rotate this along the uh, Y axis. So R, Y, and 90 to rotate 90 degrees. So I hope you get used to using the extrude key and the control B or bevel tool. Um, practice with those and understand how edges, vertexes, and faces work. Just keep practicing on any model you want. Make sure you get enough time in this week because uh, next week we're going to expand on this and carry this to the next step. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider hitting the subscribe button and you'll be notified every time I uh, upload a new uh, video. I do that about once or twice a week. And uh, share this on social media. Every little bit helps. Thanks for watching. Take care, guys. Thanks, guys, for taking the time to watch some of my videos. I really appreciate it. If you like these videos and you find them helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see new stuff that I put out, usually on a weekly basis, hit the subscribe button and you can get notified by clicking on that little bell. I really appreciate any uh, sharing that you can do and the thumbs up that I get if you like these videos kind of helps with uh, my channel to grow. You'll see that in the descriptions and on my website, I do put affiliate links to products that I show and use in these videos. Those affiliate links uh, give me a little small commission, doesn't cost you anything if you buy them. And when you buy within the first 24 hours of clicking on those links, I get a tiny little commission that helps keep this channel going. Any little bit helps to keep this up and running. Again, thanks for taking the time to watch it. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up and share on social media. Take care guys, happy watchmaking and jewelry making.